Oh yeah, Fennel here from FennelsPory.com. I've got a day in the study today. It's raining outside, so I'm going to spend today signing books, signing magazines, the, the new one, Book of Secrets, just out. Getting all that ready to go in the post on Monday morning. Uh, there's all the stuff going out, as it were. But I've had a nice surprise today. Uh, in today's post that's come in is a book, a new book, called Beside a Carporter. It's written by John Eddie Berry. But it's special to me because I have a guest chapter in this book. It's a guest chapter I've written and it's called The Far Side of Eden. And it tells the story of how uh, a friend called Andy Wareham and I were able to unlock the secrets of a very, very special carp water that was written about uh, and probably best known uh, from a book called the, the Secret Carp. So The Secret Carp was written by a good friend, my mentor in, in some respects, uh, Chris Yates. And it's about uh, a lake called Jade Lake that Chris discovered back in the early 90s. So he wrote The Secret Carp, or published The Secret Carp in 1992. And I was fortunate in then being invited to fish it by and with Chris in 1994. I joined the Jade Lake Syndicate in 1995. And then in 1996 was able to do something very special indeed. And that's the chapter I've written in John's new book. So if you come round, I'll show you the book and tell you a little bit more about the story I've written. Okay, so here we have it. John's new book, Beside a Can't Water, Notes from the Margins. Very much John's story and reflections on his fishing life from a carp angler perspective. And I have a chapter. In fact, there's two guest chapters in this book. One's written by our mate Stu Harris. One's a bit written by me. And mine's towards the end. It's the pre preceding chapter is by John and it's called Opening Night at Jade Lake. And that tells the story of his first fishing trip at Jade Lake. Jade being the lake discovered and fished by Chris Yates, which he wrote the book The Secret Carp about. So very much, very much, probably the best book on carp fishing atmosphere you can buy. It's a toss up really between Casting at the Sun, Chris's other book and this one. But The Secret Carp probably my favourite because I was lucky enough to be there. So Chris wrote this in 1992, I was then invited to fish there with him in 1994, he then invited me to join the syndicate in 1995, which was the year before John fished it in, in his chapter. But then in 1996 we were able to do something very special, and that was unlock the mysteries and secrets of a lake that hadn't been fished in recent memory and had lain fallow for about 200 years. So Chris in his book describes the character of the perfect lake, which Jade Lake very much was back in the 90s. And that's completely forgotten about, overgrown, seemingly unloved, but just a tangled wilderness of vegetation and mystery, which forced anyone visiting there to get on their hands and knees and crawl around in the undergrowth, under laurels, rhododendrons, through hacking their way through nettles and such like, to around the estate and then if you were lucky you could then tunnel your way through to the water's edge and get a glimpse of the water. The lake was vast, it was a 60 acre lake, not particularly wide, about 200 yards wide but about a mile and a half long which meant that there was a lot of moving around to get to your fish and the fish would cruise up and down the lake if you were lucky enough to find them. The syndicate I joined in 95 was made up of two halves. One half was Chris's mates who were traditional anglers, which I was one, fishing one rod, bamboo rod, centre pin reel, fishing a single, often free line bait, six to ten feet from the, from the edge of the water, from the bank. The other half of the syndicate were modern anglers fishing the traditional modern approach, three rods, setting out their store, bivvying up, laying out a bed of bait and very much a trap and waiting for the fish to come to them. Our approach was more of a roving based approach where we would go in search of the fish and, and very quickly I learned that walking boots were 
as effective as, <laughs> as fishing tackle. So my chapter in John's new book, Beside a Can't Water, is called The Far Side of Eden. And it tells the story of how, faced by the challenges of really struggling to catch these fish. So there were huge, huge fish in there and big shoals of big fish. And we could only really catch the little tiddlers. <laughs> we were catching fish up to 10 pounds, but there were fish in there six times that size. And we, we had a great time there, caught lots of small fish, had a fabulous socials and very much took it as a sort of pleasure fishing star, but while being intensely aware that these big fish were there, setting a challenge to us, because we couldn't catch them. The modern anglers were having limited success, but not really unlocking the secrets. And it was decided that the traditional anglers and the modern anglers should join forces. And me being the youngest, I was 21 at the time, 22, I was the youngest and therefore I might have a chance of understanding their techno speak and understanding their way of fishing and not seem too fuddy-duddy for them to think that they wouldn't want to fish like us. So I was tasked with approaching the modern anglers on the syndicate. It sounds formal but it, it wasn't that formal really. Just go and have a cup of tea and a chat with them Nigel. Uh, I was told to go and join forces and the, per the person and the friend that I joined forces with was a guy called Andy Wareham. So Andy and I hit off the best friendship. It, 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 to this day I, I still respect him as much as any other angler I've ever met. He's a fantastically brilliant thinking angler and inspiring in the way that he approaches the sport. And he and I decided that together we'd figure it out how to catch these fish. And for context the carp in Jade Lake at the time, you could have a shoal of maybe 120 pounders come over your bait, you wouldn't get a look in. They may pick up the free baits, they may not, they might just swim over them not even knowing what those baits are. So these fish, they've been in the lake you know, and their parents for a couple of hundred years, never seen an angler's bait, didn't know what it was, didn't acknowledge it as a food source, just didn't know. And, and therefore you could have all the fancy rigs in your you wanted to but if they weren't picking up the bait which just wasn't going to happen so Andy and I hit on a brilliant idea which I wrote about in this chapter and I won't give it away you have to read the book hit on an idea of approaching the, the pre-baiting and the style of angling and the location of angling in a way that hadn't been thought of before to get the fish to respond in a different way to in, in their feeding habits and to their catchability and it tells the story of the first opening night of 1996 when Andy and I then put that plan into action to see if it would make a difference and the, talk, the story tells of how it did make a difference what was caught and what was then caught after as a result of what we did so if you ever want an idea of how or what it would look like if a modern angler and a traditional angler fished together, mixing up watercraft, knowledge of a, of a water and tactics, stay mobile but also adopting some of the more modern approaches to, to tackle or, or techniques. What that would look like, that's what happened in this story and the results that it gave us. And it, it gives uh, I haven't yet read this book, this has arrived in the post today. It gives a context and a flavour that then kind of serves as the follow-up to Secret Carp. So if you ever wanted to know what happened after Chris wrote this book, those couple of chapters, one from John, one from me in this book, provide the what happened next. Uh, and then obviously, you know, it, it, when it eventually comes out, my wild carp book will, will give some further context into my fishing during those years. But this is the big fish one, okay? This is the big fish one. If you ever wanted to be inspired by the presence of huge, huge fish in a uh, huge uncaught fish in a wild environment that was 
possible, not possible anymore, but was possible at Jade Lake 25 years ago, then that's the chapter. So that's me done. I've got to go and sign all these now, get these ready for to go in the post. But when I'm all done, I'm going to sit down with another cup of tea and read through John's new book. It's published by Medler Press. So if you like my writing, if you like John's writing, please buy this book and enjoy the stories. Thanks for watching.